But what the marketing toolkit is about is strategy. Use social media and stop letting it use you. That's one thing about a business. It's an equalizer. It's a game changer. We have to think like the successful companies. Welcome to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Mm -mm -mm. Saving our community. It's quite a big task there. Saving our community. We're trying to build jobs um, so we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. So sometimes you may find yourself at a business crossroads, particularly if you're trying to start a business, find a job, and you're not sure which way to turn. You don't know whether to go left. You don't know whether to go right. If you get lost, you're not sure which way to turn, turn on the Marketing Pulpit Show every Friday at 10.30 a.m. right here. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and I've been at this now for 12 years. Bringing that good old marketing gospel. Got the gospel part from my dad. He was a Baptist minister. Man, he would get up in that pulpit. And I was just a youngster. I used to watch him on up there on the stage. And I said, you know what? One day I might, I might want to be a pulpit. I might want to get a pulpit of my own. What did it say? You have to be called to preach. Well, I was called to a different type of ministry. And that is business development helping folks create businesses and be successful. So yeah, I'm a, I have a ministry of my own and we call this the Marketing Pulpit. Thank you for tuning in today. If you're a first time listener or tuner inner, welcome, cheers. And if you have been here before, if you're one of our regular followers, thank you again for making this show a success. And we measure success by the number of lives that we have touched and the businesses that we have helped. And we have been, I can tell you the stories, but I would just rather you just tune in and have others tune in who are trying to start a business. And it's not just about making money. If that's your only goal, then you're probably not going to succeed. Or you're going to, you might be a flash in the pan. You make a little money and go out and do something else. But if you're about building a, um, helping build this economic foundation in our community and helping our young people and helping our black businesses and small businesses succeed and leaving legacies behind and setting good examples. And if that's your goal, then you're going to have a much, uh, it's going to be more fulfilling for one thing, and you're going to have a higher likelihood of success. Money is so fleeting. And you learn this as you get older. Yeah, I like some money. <laughs> I got needs. Got house notes and cars and got to eat. Need some clothes on my back. Like a good cup of coffee. Stuff not free. <laughs> but there are other things, too, that money can buy that are not so tangible. Peace of mind. And you want to give back. You want to help other people as well. Uh, if you want to find out more about the show, go to marketingpulpit.com and you can find out uh, about the show, and you can see some of the past shows. We have shows all the way back to 20, hey, 2010. Woo! And if you want to look for a particular topic, just type in the just search, do a search. And as a topic you want to look up, branding, social media, websites, advertising, networking, just type it in this in the search bar, and you'll find a show. Sometimes we had experts, guests to come in and talk about it. If you're looking for a particular guest, just type in their name in the search bar and it'll bring them right up. If you were a guest on the show and you want to go back and find, say, hey, Gate, when I was on your show, where is all this good stuff I said? <laughs> I've had those questions too. Just go to Marketing Pulpit and type your name or the name of the person or host or guest you're looking for and it'll bring them right up there on the screen. You can also go to YouTube. Go to YouTube, uh, our channel on YouTube, Marketing Pulpit, very popular channel. We have the content organized over there a little better. 
Uh, you can look up the one minute blurbs. You can look up the weekly show in its entirety. And we also have separated the marketing sermon, which is a signature part of the show. Usually the last 10, 15 minutes of the show, I give what is called a marketing sermon, where I talk about a topic of interest. Like today, we're going to talk about social media safety. So we have all those separated. And you can go to one of the playlists and just listen to those if you don't want to listen to the whole entire two-hour show. I mean, yeah, one-hour show, not two hours yet. We can also get the news items um, and guests and uh, do a little motivational at the beginning of the show. So all of those have been separated. And you can go to YouTube and kind of pick out, pick and choose like a cafeteria. And of course, we're on Instagram where we have one minute uh, blurbs of some of the highlights of the show. And we're also on Twitter. And we are on LinkedIn. So we are all things marketing pulpit. And we plan to get back over at Radio One at some point. We were there for 10 years before the pandemic hit. We left the studio and just haven't gone back yet. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to go back in there yet. But uh, we will be back on uh, Radio One at some point. Um, so we're still, still very much in the in the mix. Um, we have an interesting show lined up today. We're going to talk about social media safety. Now I feel like I would be derelict in my duty if I didn't broach this subject from time to time, because it is so in the interest of the community. Some of the young people who are just learning about social media and how it works. Some of the people who are older and they are setting up their social media accounts for the first time and really don't know how it works. And they're just making a mess, some of them. <laughs> I'm not knocking older people, but I'm just saying. Sometimes uh, you get just enough knowledge to go out there and really screw things up. So I'm going to give you some basics and let you know that Social media can be unsafe. There are some dangers if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't take some of these basic precautions that we're going to talk about later in the show. So you don't want to miss that. We're also going to talk about some things that are happening in the news as we do every week. And we're going to talk about war in the workplace, how people are still acting the daggone fool out here. What's wrong, folks? They know darn well this stuff they're doing is not, is not right. <laughs> uh, say good morning to uh, Brother Gerald Brown, the greatest plumber in town. Thank you for joining us this morning. And good morning, Brother Bradley Thomas, child attorney. Glad to see you joining us this morning. He also has a show, comes on every Thursday. Very informative. And I tune in, matter of fact, I try to tune in every week when I can. I mean, I think I was tuning in yesterday, so check him out. But thanks again for everybody who's tuning in. We are in the month of July now, and we have some observances. We had, uh, what else happened? We had, of course, we had uh, Fourth of July, which you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I don't know about that. But it's also Family Reunion Month. It's National Black Family Month. It's National Grilling Month. Mmm, man, I love that grill. I got me a new grill. I'm grilling everything, man. I'm grilling eggs and jello and coffee and <laughs> making a mess, but I'm getting my grill, getting my money worth for my grill. It's National Hot Dog Month. That kind of ties into the grill and National Ice Cream Month. Hmm. Man, that grill, that's a that's something else. Um the only thing I was listening to, I was talking to somebody the other day, and he told me. They brought up one of these expressions that I hear quite often. I'm talking about something, maybe in the internet or something. They said, you know what? It's a necessary evil. I said, yeah, you know what? Many things in our lives these days are necessary evils. And what we mean when we say something is a necessary evil is that it's something that has value but the bad might outweigh the good. It may not be evil in the literal sense because evil is really a subjective term. We might think of the devil as evil or certain politicians as evil or you know, uh, dictators and things like that. But when we take a, an expression like a necessary evil, I think we're speaking more in a pejorative than we're, than we're speaking literally. So, 
when I get to this term, I like to ask, do we just accept it prima facie or we just accept it because that's the way it's been put to us? It's a necessary evil. That means it's necessary and it's evil. That means it's, we can't live without it. And even though we know the bad outweighs the good. Well, my being the, the way I am, who always like to analyze things, I take nothing at face value. <laughs> Sometimes I think too much. Well, I took this expression in, as I do most things. And I say I'm going to break it down this morning to let you know it's, it's about control and power, having control and power over your own dominion, your own life. And so when people throw these expressions at us, we don't just accept them without challenging them. I challenge most of them. As a matter of fact, just go back, look through the show. I've challenged everything. Everything since Jack and Jill went up the hill. <laughs> Whatever hill. Who is Jack? Why did Jill come following him? <laughs> well, anyway, I break them all down. But uh, let's talk about this one for a minute. So when I'm faced with something that that people say is a necessary evil. I say let's 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 break it down a little further and let's not take this on an absolutism. First thing I want to ask you, is it necessary and is it evil? So when somebody tells you something is a necessary evil, first thing you ask, is it necessary and is it evil? We're going to talk about the internet. That's probably a, a classic example what some might describe as a necessary evil. Is it necessary and is it evil? And if you find yourself asking that question, these are some steps I would like for you to take, a little mental exercise I want you to take. First of all, what you want to do is reduce the necessity of this thing that you call evil. Reduce your reliance upon it. Try to wane your independence, wane your dependence on it to be more independent. And you might even practice avoidance. If this thing is indeed evil, why are you running so headlong into it? Now, you don't want to say it was a necessary evil, so something's evil. Shouldn't you start trying to do it less? <laughs> That's the first thing you can do. The second thing you do is fight it. You just told me it's evil. Why do you have to just accept it? Let's make it less evil. Let's change it. Let's modify it. Let's take countermeasures. You said it was evil. So let's reduce it. Let's be less dependent upon it. Let's fight it. And then third, and last but not least, if these evils that are in our midst that we think are necessary, let's form partnerships and alliances and go out and combat it as a unit, as a group, as a community. Let's do something about it. I've seen uh, trailblazers over the years, people like C. Dolores Tucker and people that were fighting rap music at one time. They were right fighting this. People are fighting this. Yes, certain things are just inherent in our community, they provide jobs, provide opportunity, increases communication, advances technology. But to some, it is inherently evil. But we don't have to accept it. We can modify it. We can change it. We can make it better. We can reduce our re dependence upon it. So let's not be like lambs led to the slaughter. Just because somebody says something is necessary, particularly if you think it's evil, then it makes sense. I think so. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about some items in the news. And you don't wanna miss this sermon today on social media. And I wanna, I'm gonna preface my discussion today about our sermon. That was a young man called Pop Smoke. That wasn't his real name. His real name was Bashar Baccarat Jackson. In 2020, around February, he was killed. He was a rapper. He was killed. And 
his demise was precipitated by something he posted on social media. And that's what got me thinking about this topic today. It got me talking, thinking about necessary evils and it got me thinking about safety on social media. Is this, is social media a necessary evil? One, is it necessary? And two, is it evil? What I'm gonna say evil, I'm, I'm already, I've already said evil is, is a subjective term. I mean, evil, you think something's going to make you go to hell, going to kill you, going to damage, do permanent damage to you. Well, some even feel that way. But I think that if we, it's also another expression of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. There is some redeeming value, particularly if you own a business with social media. But if you are not safety, if you're not safety conscious, it is like a loaded gun. It's like giving a loaded gun to somebody who hasn't been taught how to use a firearm. It's like handing the keys to a, a drunk. You really have to use it. If we have, some of us have surmised that there's some evil in it and that it's necessary, let's minimize it. Let's change it. Let's make it better and let's form coalitions to protect our community. So let's, we're going to talk about that, but back to Pop Smoke. He posted something on the internet. He's young, living his best life. But because he didn't take some of these precautions that I'm going to give you later on, this 21-year-old man is no longer with us. That's why I say I feel like it's imperative that I broach this topic today. I broached it in the past, but I feel like I need to do it at least every six months or a year because new people are listening. Some people didn't get it. And like when you go to church, I tell you not to steal one time. That doesn't mean you're not going to, you need to hear it again. That's what my dad used to do anyway. Man, some of his sermons were so repetitive. I, I knew him by heart. <laughs> All right, let me take a quick break. This is the Marketing Pulpit, and good morning, Maddie. Carolina is in the house up in here. I love that we have this great business community who tunes in every week because what I've also noticed that they're sharing this information, and many of them have contacted me. Some have contacted me for advice. Some have contacted to be clients. I'm not looking for clients. I know y'all saying, this guy crazy. <laughs> I'm serious. If you're looking for a client right now, you get ready to wait. Robert Gatewood is not, cannot take you right now. Am I rolling in money over here? Am I lighting cigars with $100 bills? No, I'm not. But what I am doing, I am striving to give better service to the clients that I have. And I am not a volume Walmart drive through business. I'm a marketing boutique. And if you've been fortunate enough to get under the gate, <laughs> you're going to get some good service and you're going to get some results. Everybody else, uh, let's talk maybe, maybe in the fall. We might be able to talk to you then. Okay. But thanks again for contacting me. I'll give you a free consultation now. You go to gatewoodmarketing.com, push that button. I'll talk to anybody for 15 minutes. I mean, within reason. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to everybody, but you know what I mean. All right, folks, that's the marketing pool, but I'm Robert Gate. But I'll be back in a minute. So don't go anywhere. And good morning, uh, Platinum, Platinum, funny lady. When I say funny lady, that means she's a comedian. She's a comic and she's funny too. She has a, a show. I don't know if you had your show already, Plat Platinum, but uh, much success on you. Thank you for tuning in. And also, if you want to join the conversation, we have a new platform now where you can actually jump on here and join me and talk, sit right here on the screen beside me as Platinum and some of the others have done. And we can talk about some of these topics that we're going to broach today. We can talk about, if you want to talk about the internet and what do you think, what's your solution for keeping people safe or yourself safe and how you use it versus somebody else. If you want to talk about what happened to pop smoke, we're going to delve into that a little deeper when we get to our news. 
And if you want to talk about some of the other type topics we want to talk about, like what Elon Musk is doing at Twitter and what Amazon is doing, what Uber is doing, come online and let's talk about it. And we have a new section. Go to marketingpulpit.com and go to be a guest on the show. And there's a button you push. And that thing will put you right up here on the screen next to me. Wait a minute. That's, that's too easy. <laughs> well, it is easy. And also, the, the other catch is you get a chance to promote that business of yours. If you are a attorney, or an engineer, or have a hair salon, if you're a model, if you're an author, if you are a comedian, if you're a butcher baker or candlestick maker, if you're like me and most people, you need businesses, you need business and clients to stay viable and afloat. Well, the marketing pulpit is giving you this opportunity. So don't go anywhere. Let's hang on for a minute and we'll be back in a moment. This is the marketing pulpit. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in about one minute. <laughs> I'm not busy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should pay more. They should give them more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but only folks bag the food. Got to talk about it. Every week, we talk about some of the hot items in the news, and then you, as a listener, have an opportunity to come on camera and give your point of view. And afterwards, you can talk about your organization, your book you're trying to sell, your event. It's a collective effort, and and because uh, I've seen it from all facets, where you have parents who are involved in their child's life, but still things happen. Well, Robert, I'm in the financial services industry, and I just really want to encourage people to get their things organized and documented. When we don't see our children learn and we see our children in the street, they're going to learn from something. So it's best that they learn from us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you're having me a coffee break. See that brand? MPI Marketing Pulpit International. That's right. We're broadcast all over the world. That means US, Africa, Europe, Asia, those other continents. <laughs> Been a long time. Uh, welcome back to the show. I'm Robert Gatewood. I'm your host. I'm here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Go to marketingquibit.com. You'll find us on all the major platforms, social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And you can't run from this information. It's going to chase you because it's good stuff. If you're trying to business, if you're trying to start a business or if you have a business, why wouldn't you listen to this? You don't know everything. I don't. <laughs> but I'm trying to, I keep up. I be out here reading while y'all some of y'all sleep. And then I come here every Friday and share it with you. I'm, I'm making it easy for you. Don't go out here and curse the darkness when you be lighting a candle. We are your candle. That's right. That's a little big headed of me. But I've been doing this so long. That's why I'm not looking for clients. When you do it right and you have a mission, a purpose, clients will find you. 
I'm I'm telling you how to do it the right way. I'm telling you. Listen if you want to. The ones who've listened, like Attorney Bradley Thomas, Gerald Brown, Platinum, Till Successful, Joe Madison, Mimi Fuller, Willie Jolly, all these folks. They've listened. Am I a know-it-all? Nope. But I have a purpose. I'm not in it for the money. I have a greater calling. And because I'm not in it for the money, I have been blessed. That's why these news, some of these news and news stories distress me. Like this first one. Long lines are back as the U.S. food banks are overflowing due to inflation. That's right. People are in long lines right now at food banks trying to get free food. This inflation has taken a bite out of people, no pun intended. It's $5 a gallon gas, mortgage, high mortgages and rents. We're seeing a 40-year high right now in the inflation rate. And it's been surging ever since April 2020. So... We got to take this, we got to count our blessings for one, but we have to take this a little more seriously. And don't think because you're having a good week or a good month or a good year that you're out of the dark. Business is cyclical. Introduction. The growth, the maturity, the decline. It depended on the phase of the cycle that you're in. You can make some decisions that could impact you forever. That's another reason you need to listen to this show. And we inform you of such things. Okay? And Platinum made a very good point. She said success, service, and then money. Hey, I like that. I'm going to borrow that from you, Platinum. <laughs> All right, let's see what else is going on. So, yeah, long lines are back due to inflation. And if anybody's out there suffering, struggling, and there are resources out here. I had somebody call me the other day, and um, they were telling me that somebody was calling them. They couldn't buy food. And I mean, when I hear those kind of stories, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have a big heart. And because of that, I think I've been blessed. But there are resources out here, and nobody should have to go to bed hungry, or the kids shouldn't be able to get a computer or a roof over their head. But you got to find the resources. And one thing the marketing pulpit has been good at is connecting people. So if you if you know somebody who's hurting, uh, needs some help, um, whatever I can do to help steer them in the right direction, we'll be glad to. I've also been known to pull out a couple of coins myself. We've handed out food at uh, Thanksgiving during the holidays, sponsored uh, food uh, delivery companies. Uh, so we try to do our part. We don't just sit up here and give out information. We actually are boots on the ground. Uh, Twitter is suing Musk, Elon Musk, for yanking that Twitter deal. Now, is, is, uh, am I the only one that's kind of like, yay? <laughs> that uh, I'm not necessarily sure, happy about it, suing anybody. But I wasn't one of those folks that was championing Elon Musk owning Twitter. I'm just saying, uh, Twitter. I mean, Elon Musk kind of went a little, went a little rogue on the, uh, went a little left field on his political leanings, and a lot of folks were not feeling that deal. So now they're in a lawsuit. Uh, he offered forty-four million dollars to buy Twitter, and he was asking Twitter, said, "Look, I need some data that tells me all these followers you have or you claim to have." He somehow felt that quite a few of them were bots or robots. They think that, in other words, they think Twitter had padded the books or padded the followers. And Twitter kept saying, well, look, these are real folks. Musk wasn't convinced, so he pulled out of the deal. And that deal is on the, on the is waning because Twitter is now suing him for his breach of contract. And these, these rich folks out here just having a ball, aren't they? We out here trying to 
pay for five dollar gas. <laughs> they argued about forty four billion dollars. Isn't that too much money for one person anyway? That should not be a hungry person in the world if you have forty four billion dollars. Let's just say it's all right. Look, look, look. I need some. I need a yacht. I need a airplane. I need a mansion. So I'm going to keep five billion for myself. You still have thirty nine billion dollars to play with if you offer to buy Twitter. There are folks in Africa right now. There's a plague going on right now as we speak. So many people are dying. They have a little section for the babies that that die. Can you imagine a mother having to watch her child die in her arms because she can't feed them? And people are here playing around with $44 billion? Your latest toy? Because you've already gone to the moon and got in the spaceship. And what else can we do? Well, let's go buy Twitter. Something's wrong with this planet. My goodness, that should not be a starving person anywhere. Anyway, get off my soapbox here. Well, we ought to mark me pull up here. So I have a. You, you gain that privilege when you're free. All right. Speaking of struggling, the average rent for a an apartment. I'm, I have to look at this. I had to make sure this was a wasn't a misprint. Manhattan, New York. $5,000 a month in rent. <laughs> I know I need to pour something in this cup now besides coffee. I didn't say 500. I didn't say 5,000 a year. $5,000 a month. My math tells me that about, what's that about $60,000 a year in rent? Well, you better be, you better have some bank to live in Manhattan. And car repossession on a related story, car repossessions are on the rise as the average price for a car hits $47,000. Have I been out of the car market a little too long? <laughs> I did, but I've had a bad history with cars. I was young and foolish. I mean, I owned all these luxury cars. I mean, I was into the Mercedes and the Jaguars, and you name it, Jack, BMW, I had them all. That's when I was young, and I'm not saying if you have those cars, you, you're knucklehead. I'm just saying when you're young and you you have a taking care of your savings and investments, and yeah, that's not a good thing. But as I've gotten older, and my priorities are straight now, I see a $47,000 car. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> that might be the average for you. I'm not going there with you. I got better things to put my money on. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to do it. Not yet. But like I said, but if that's, what all, that's all I can get, that's what I'm going to have to pay. Maybe I need to wisen up and realize that that's, that's the going rate. I also went, bought all these used cars. I figured... I'm not going to tell you, but you know, that was this thing about you buy a used car because when you buy a new car, the minute you drive off the parking lot, it depreciates 25%. I got all of that, boy, but I seem to pick all the bad used ones. <laughs> so those car, those repair bills, boy, were killing the brother. So I'm not going to buy anybody on cars. I will advise you on money, though. I wrote a book called Played in Full The Marketing Exploitation of Blacks in America. And cars. <laughs> Man, that they were my I was the they were my whipping boy. I talked about cars like like a dog because that's where the that's really where it hurt. That's the that's a speak it on the financial underpinning of black America is automobiles. Anyway, anyway, just just food for thought. The car repossessions are on the rise. So the folks that are buying these forty these forty seven thousand dollar cars. They're not hanging on to them because they're bringing they're, they're, they're taking more cars back now than ever before. So my moral of this story: don't get a forty-seven thousand dollar car because <laughs> the chance that you're keeping hanging on to it is pretty slim right now, especially during this time of inflation and some of these other challenges we're seeing in the community. So just 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 put your money in 
go start your business and then take that money and buy yourself a car through the business. Let's be smarter, ladies and gentlemen. And for everybody who's put all their money in cryptocurrency, man, I can't tell you all how many people have contacted me over the years wanting to come on the show and get me to embrace their cryptocurrency idea and well, just in general, I get folks calling me every day in general to get on the show. That's why I put this section on the website now called to get to be a guest on the show. There are three ways you can do it. But my bottom line is a lot of folks in the cryptocurrency industry have contacted me and said, look, we got to come on here. I'm going to show you your, your staff, your, your followers how to how to you know grab that brass ring. But one of the big uh, giants of the industry, Celsius Network, has filed for bankruptcy, Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And it froze customer accounts, halt with, halted withdrawals, and it had accumulated $20 billion in assets by offering depositive interest rates as high as 18%. And they are just one of the latest casualties of the crypto crash that has wiped out $2 trillion. I can see y'all been mad at me now. Gatewood, you had these folks on the show telling me to go buy all this cryptocurrency and now look at... I don't tell anybody what to do. I bring guests on here and you have to make your own decisions, but I do. I do. I am very selective because I understand the importance of the influence of when you have a guest. And I myself bought cryptocurrency. I bought Bitcoin. I bought Dogecoin. Man, and they are in the toilet. <laughs> like, whoa, man, shouldn't have done that. Anyway, just a little information here. Now, here's an, inter here's an interesting story here. This, this goes back to, this is not necessarily social media, but it goes back to the internet and some of the things that are happening. Amazon gave Ring doorbell camera footage to police without the consent of some of their users. Now, if any of you are familiar, Amazon has this Ring doorbell where you can see somebody whether they're stealing the porch pirates or taking your, your Amazon gifts. And uh, so it's a camera. And it, the information is stored in the cloud. Well, unfortunately, when you store something in the cloud, that means that provider, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Facebook, whether it's or whomever, they have certain rights to that information. And they tell you in that long thing that you never read, and you click off and say, I agree to everything you're saying, it's including giving my firstborn kid to you. You, you, you. We sign these things, and then one day we look up, and the company that we have entrusted with our valuable and private information is now handing it over to authorities. Now, of course, the first thing people say, I don't break the law, then you don't have to worry about it. Don't you're a good guy. Well, we know that good guy, right and wrong, has been very subjective lately. You have people now that are running for power that don't understand facts. They don't understand the Constitution. They are anti darn near everything that we have been told to hold dear and believe in. And now suddenly some of these very same people are going to have access to your data, to your camera footage. That's not, that's a very troubling sign to me. I'm not saying that Amazon did anything wrong. They said it was only 11 accounts that they, that they admitted to or that we know about. But is that the beginning or is there that only the 11 that we know about? What about your Dropbox files? What about your Facebook files? What about your, do they, if somebody comes along and suspect you of some ill will or hanky panky, they can come along now and say, look, I want all your records without even asking for it. I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, here's another big company that's going and going rogue Uber. Now, once again, you're going to realize after a while. 
even though I'm a tech guy, I've been programming and thinking with computers ever since I was in undergrad in college. I was one of the first, probably one of the first, we were, I was probably one of the first people that took a computer program in course. It was so long ago, we didn't even have a computer in the class. <laughs> we were doing uh, flow charts and drawing boxes and doing if thens. Um, so the reason I'm I'm willing to share this information, I must admit I do have a little bit of a understanding of how this world works, and so I'm willing to kind of help you understand. And I also have an understanding of marketing. Obviously, that's what I do for a living. But Uber has admitted its past mistakes. They say they're a different company now, but Uber, like many companies, they admitted that they used South Africa, for example. Some, anyway, make a long story short. Some Uber emails got released to the public. That's the other thing, too. Your emails. Nothing bad. Anyway, the email got leaked to the public, and they, they had a lot of hang, things going back and forth between the Uber executives. And they admitted a lot of things that we suspected that they give these incentives. They go into a market, they give these drivers these great incentives, cash incentives, high commissions, knowing all along that they're going to get them hooked. And then they're going to withdraw the commissions, I mean, withdraw the incentives, reduce the commissions, and then they start changing the rules. One of the rules they had in this Af South Africa case was. They were because they be drivers were concerned about safety. They were going into some of these tough neighborhoods and they were they were initially they did not allow people to pay with cash. Then, like I say, once the money starts flowing and the rules get relaxed, all of a sudden they start accepting cash. And now these drivers became just walking targets. I mean, they, they were just I mean, like like those lions, what, those alligators eating the wildebeest when they're running across the river. The bad guys are just sitting there waiting on them. So you have to, as you make your deals with these big organizations, whether you're subscribing, working for them, just know this. They are in it for the money. <laughs> I just shouldn't have to say this. They're not in it for you. They're in it for the money. Now, you can benefit. It could be that necessary evil we we're talking about. But what did I say about the necessary evil? One, is it necessary? <laughs> okay. All right, folks, let's let's take a quick break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna do a we're gonna talk about this pop smoke. And we're gonna segue into our sermon for the day of uh war in the workplace. And is social media dangerous? And how can we make it safer? This is the Marketing Pulpit. I'm Robert Gatewood. We are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in a moment. Marketing Pulpit, I'll be back shortly. <laughs> I'm not busy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should pay more, they should give them more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks bag the food, gotta talk about it. Every week we talk about some of the hot items in the news, and then you as a listener have an opportunity to come on camera and give your point of view and afterwards you can talk about your organization your book you're trying to sell your event it's a collective effort and and because uh, i've seen it from all facets where you have parents who are involved in their child's life but still things happen well robert i'm in the financial services industry I'm, and i just really want to encourage people to get their things organized and documented we don't see our children learning, we see our children in the street. They're gonna learn from something. So it's best that they learn from us. Well, 
Welcome back to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses. We're saving jobs. We're saving our community. Now, if you find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just turn on the Marketing Pulpit Show. We're on a mission. Uh, we have a new segment called um, Open Mic, and where we in, entreat our bis- listeners uh, followers to come on Mike and talk about some of the topics that we're talking about. See, we have a couple of folks in the waiting room here, so we're going to bring them on in a minute. Uh, we'll do a couple of quick more stories, and then we'll bring in uh, one or two about, depending on the time, we may, we may be able to just get the one today, but we're going to bring on the first person who tuned in, and we'll get their feedback on some of these topics we're talking about. I see we have Bryn Lee, the model. She's waiting... I see somebody else, they don't have their name. They're kind of going in and out. So we may have to put them on hold to next time. So uh, let me just talk quickly about this story. Uh, some of you quick stories in the news we call War in the Workplace. Uh, the first story in War in the Workplace, we're going to talk about, okay. There was a, an instance where a Boston woman was found dead on a hiking trail after a first date with a cop she met in Phoenix. And she met this person online. Now we go back to our earlier topic with with, with with seeing some things that are happening in the online space where people I feel honestly, I don't think they're taking the, enough precaution. Um, so without getting too in too much into the details of that particular story, I'm just gonna say, even on these dating sites, you really have to be more careful. First dates, you shouldn't. I, I'm just going to say on a first date, I doubt I'm going to go out in the woods with somebody on a hiking trail. I'm going to be around a million people. I'm going to have on the lights. I'm going to have a cousin or somebody sitting at the next table, keeping an eye on <laughs> I'm just saying if you're probably more of a female, but especially on these first dates and you're meeting people online, you just want to take a little more precaution. Uh, Brett Favre, for some reason, the ex-governor of uh, Mississippi issued a a, a, a order to pay Brett Favre one point one million dollars from the welfare fund. <laughs> now, something about this just not does not add up. First of all, why is Brett Favre getting a welfare check from any of any sort? One point one million. Hmm, something doesn't sound right there. Okay, I'm just going to quickly get through this. Uh, a, a suspected burglar got stuck in the vent at a pizza shop. I'm going to keep moving from that. A Georgia corrections officer accused of smuggling $30,000 into the prison for her boo. Why do folks think they can get away with this stuff, first of all? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, let me keep going. Fake Marine spent two years in prison for defrauding. And this, this person here, this is another one of these things, but the, the, the schemers are on the rise right now. This lady claimed she was a combat veteran a wounded combat Marine who was dying of cancer. Now, if somebody tell you they're a, they're a combat veteran who had been wounded and they're dying of cancer, you'd have to have a hard heart, not at least <laughs> give them a little something. You figure nobody can lie that bad. You just figure that just, that just wouldn't be possible. But that was the case. This lady defrauded $250,000 from people. Oh boy. Anyway, let me just let's talk about Pop Smoke. I didn't bring up my uh, guess who's waiting. Pop Smoke. This story breaks my heart. Home invasion. When the police arrived, they found Jackson with multiple gunshot wounds. A, a few hours later, he was pronounced dead. A 15 year old intruder who was one of four admitted to killing Jackson over a diamond studded Rolex watch, which they in turn sold for $2,000. The day before his murder, Pop Smoke and a friend had posted several images on social media, including one in which the home address could be seen in the background. Now I've talked about this on many occasions. The, The criminals saw the home address in the background and they knew he had a rolex watch he also posted the story on instagram and facebook 
on the gifts he had received. And one of those Instagram posts showed his full address, the packaging, and it gave out his location. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the marketing put. Let me bring in, let me bring in, I got a guest here in the waiting room. Let me bring one board here. See if I still know how to do this thing. Good morning, Brent Lee the model. Welcome to Good the morning. marketing show. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm doing just wonderful, doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Like you, you look like a model sitting over there. So <laughs> you're Thank tight you. fits. Thank you. Uh, now we've been talking about several topics today. Um, we've been talking about Facebook, we've been talking about uh, online safety, we've been talking about Uber, we've been talking about Twitter, we've been talking about Pop Smoke. Any particular topic you want to chime in on this morning? Social media. Social media. Oh my goodness. Tell us, tell us what do you what do you think about all this? This this how to be safe? Is it a necessary evil? Can we use it for good? Can we use it for business? Should we limit it? What do you what's your take on it? Well, after I'm in a class, well, I'm taking a class in North Carolina State, and I found out a lot of things about social media. It can help you, and it also can harm you. You have to know how to put your, what you want out there and put it out safely. I've learned a lot of stuff how to boost me, but a lot of people put stuff out. They put a lot of personal information that shouldn't be put out on social media because people I'm learning people watching social media people when you click in a title they try to read your mind and go put different things up so you can follow them more so social media can help you and it also can harm you so you got to know the different how to do it and I'm learning through this class I'm learning a lot how to promote myself safely and get it done. So when you said social media, I was determined to get on and say, yes, it can help you and it also can harm you. Because I would say for myself, um, I, I use social media probably 90% to promote my show and my businesses. Every now and then I might throw something on there for the brothers. We have a little singing group or uh, things like that, but I rarely just do it for uh, so I have a specific use for social media. Like I said, maybe still 10, 15 percent. I might go on every now and then because people, the whole concept of social media is social. You can't be a hermit. Either you're on it or you're not. You can't say I'm, I'm going to be on there and just only be about business because the social aspect is really what makes it popular. People want to know about who you are. Now, what are some of the just a quick tip? What is now you you are a uh, tell us exactly what you do. I model. Oh, I'm a okay. model. And I'm trying to promote myself for different things. There's one goal I'm striving for, and that's commercial. But I have to go through what I'm going through to get what I'm going through. But you have you can use social media for social media, but you got to learn how to do it. You know, don't put too much information about yourself on social media. You can a lot of people use it to connect, which is good. But the problem comes when you put too much personal information on the social media. You can use it. A lot of people use it for getting together. They use it for their reunion. They use it for dating. They use this. It's a lot. Social media is growing because of the, kind of the pandemic came. A lot mm -hmm. of people are going. I learned that in class the other day. A lot of people are using social media to find out things, to order things, to to buy things, is it's growing. It's a growing business now. And you just have to be careful what you do. So I know now what I need to do to be safe. So like I know how to put myself up there to get more rating, which I have seen go up since I've been taking this class. Um, the instructor have given me personal information to do. So It'll work for your business. It'll work for whatever you're doing. You just got to know how to do it. That's exactly right. So, and I've I've seen. Uh, I've just looked, checked out your profile. Looks like you have been growing. You're obviously doing something right, but you have to balance that with safety. 
Am I yes. correct? Yes. 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 A lot of young people uh, who are not maybe not in season or just haven't been out here as long, they're so focused on the growing part that they don't weigh, they don't give proper weight to the safety part. They just want to get as many followers, many clicks, as many shares, as much engagement as possible without safeguarding themselves. So I think that's the message I'm trying to get. I'm not saying don't go out here and close down your social media account because some may say it is a necessary evil. But if it and I, and I use the word evil and pejoratively, and I'm not saying, you know, you're going to go to hell if you use it. I'm saying, but sometimes things <laughs> may, have, <laughs> they may have more. The bad sometimes might outweigh the good. But I'm saying, yes, in this day and age, particularly in somebody in your industry, it's necessary. You can't be a model and an actress if you're not on social media. People are not going to know about you. You might be one, but nobody's going to know who you are. And it's going to be very difficult to get the kind of following and, and uh, publicity you need. So give us a quick, um, how people can find out more about you and your uh, your modeling career. How can they, are you, what's your Facebook? What's your uh, website? You have a website? Website? Yes, I do. But as you said, I am mostly on all this platform on social media, Twitter, okay. LinkedIn, uh, TikTok. And I found out TikTok is, has more international connection than Instagram. So I, I've been told to push TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Uh, chip, well, I'm on all of them. You want to name? And my website is brandleadthemodel.com. Most of my platform are brand lead the model. So if you type Brandon, in that, Brandon, you, boy, I tell you, you will see my face and you just go follow me on YouTube. I'm trying to think of all of them because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> you know, this is my life. Okay, just go put in brand lead the model. And when you there see you my face, you would, right. uh, just click come on it and subscribe to me. Well, Follow really me on Facebook. I have two pages on Facebook, my regular page and my business page. But it is Brindley the model. All right, folks, let's go out here and follow Brindley the model. Let's thank her. Let's show her some love for coming on this morning. It takes a brave person to come on here and face this. <laughs> so let's let's reward her with following. Go to BrindleyTheModel.com and her different platform. Let's go ahead and follow this system. And let's help push her up, lift her up, and put the community behind her in this so marketing pulpit community supports you and thank you for joining us this morning one more thing insight. robert one yes. more thing um i have a fashion show in jacksonville north carolina on okay. the 23rd on the 23rd of this month okay so y'all come and go there and follow me there all right 23rd you and let it remind that's next next Saturday. Yeah, let us know again and also put it on our Facebook. We'll be glad to share it with the audience. Uh, we'll we'll share it on the uh on the marketing pulpit platform to let the audience know. So thank you again, Brand Lee and Platinum says thank you, Brand Lee, for that good information, for sharing your information with us. And Gerald Brown give you some applause over here. So you can follow us already. So <laughs> thank, well, you, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're going to check out here. We're going to jump into our sermon for the day. And thank you again to Brand Lee, the model, for joining us. And we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to jump into our sermon, Social Media Safety. I'm going to give you some tips, things that I've learned over the past many years. I've been on the social media platform. Some you may know about. Some may be new to you. But whatever the case may be, you want to make sure you listen to this and share it with others. This is the Marketing Pulpit. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in a minute. I'm not busy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should pay more, they should give them more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks back the food, got to talk about it. All right, welcome back to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. Also, don't forget that uh, you can, just like uh, Brand Lee the model did, you can come on here, and as long as you got something to say, you have something to add to the conversation, um, you can go to that, um, go to marketingpulpit.com and become a guest on the show. We don't have any time for anybody extra today, but next week, Go ahead and bookmark it. Come on here. You see uh, Brenda Lee model. She just gave you a good example of how it works. 
and we can talk about one of the topics or several of the topics. And then at the end, you can promote your book, your website, your social media platforms. Uh, like she has a show coming up. And uh, like last a uh, couple of weeks ago, Platinum came on. She gave some very good insight. She talked about her comedy show. So we've given you an opportunity to promote yourself. You can sit here and complain about not having traffic or business or customers if you want to. What are you doing about it? One of my uh, popular sermons re recently was about instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. Let's quickly talk about social media. I'm going to start out by saying if the product is free, the service is you. Remember this at all times. These platforms are in it for the money. Just because they gave you a free account, gave you a free cloud storage, gave you a place to build a website, they're not Santa Claus. They're in it for the money. And the minute you lose sight of that, you start to drop your guard. You're like, oh, man, that's so nice of them. Something else they're going to do. They're going to lure you with free services to gain access to your family and friends. And that's not, I'm not knocking uh, the player's game. It's a model that has worked for all of these platforms. So you are getting something in return. Like I talk about YouTube, for instance. YouTube gives you this great account, free. But they give you, you, you start out with a Gmail account. You don't pay for that. Then they give you a YouTube account. You don't pay for that. But what you're getting, you're giving them is eyeballs. They're giving them views. You're giving them access because then they can resell that, that they leverage that for advertising and they can generate a zillion dollars. But you're getting something too. Have you ever, I remember before YouTube came along, how difficult it was to get a video online. Man, you need a special equipment, need a big hard drive, you had these big old drive you had to carry around. So I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying you have to understand how the game is played. And you got to follow the money. Now, what we don't seem to weigh into the equation is the safety factor. That has not gotten enough weight, in my opinion. People focus on the money and they're not focusing adequately on safety. So in most cases, what social media users are doing, whether they are aware of it or not, is they're putting up a flashing sign, basically saying, I'm not home. The door is open. And just in case you don't know how to get here, here's a map. We just talked about pop smoke. That's almost literally what he did. He showed his gifts, his money, and the address on how to get there. And the bad guys were just sitting there waiting. There's somebody watching you right now. And I hate to, I don't want to scare anybody. There's somebody watching you right now who would like to do you harm. And they're just waiting for the opportunity. They're just waiting for you to open the door. They're waiting for you to post online that you're out of town or that your spouse or significant other left you home for the weekend, or that your kid is going to be at a certain school at a certain time. You can't give them that liberty. So what you have to do is to make sure that you are behaving as if you're being watched, like Pop Smoke, who learned a little too late. And you have to govern yourself accordingly. First of all, there's, there's no such thing as private. The internet is like an elephant. It never forgets. You can delete it. You can wipe your hard drive clean. You can go up in the cloud and delete it. But there's such things now as screen share, screen recorder. You can't put it up there if you didn't mean to do it. So think before you post anything online. Certain things you should never share online. And I hate to even have to repeat this. Don't ever put your social security card online unless it's one of those secure government sites or some place that has been tested and has all the security mechanisms in place. But as far as on social media and sharing it with friends and family, just don't do it. You shouldn't give out your birth date year. Now, I know everybody likes those little love tokens you get when your birthday rolls around. 
But if you can give out your birth date without giving out the year, do that because that, that year is one more piece of information that an identity theft might need to complete the puzzle. Never give out your home address online, ever. Password, pins, don't do it. Bank accounts, credit card information. When I say don't give it out online, I mean sharing it on like groups and with friends and chat rooms and in feeds. You don't want to do it. There are secure sites like banks and government institutions and e-commerce sites where you have to share that information on occasion, but that's the only place. Don't be sharing it with friends and family and coworkers. Personalize your privacy setting. When you get these social media accounts, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Google, or so forth, they have a section called privacy settings. Go into that early before you start posting. There are certain things that you can share with everybody. Some you can share with select people. Some you can share with just yourself. You need to find out what those buttons you need to push. And you need to do that before you go wholesale sharing everything. Okay? I'm going to give you these tips now. I want you to pay attention. Um, think before you post. If you're not comfortable, just don't do it. It's that simple. If you say, wow, man, I might maybe I shouldn't do this, then don't do it. You have other opportunities and other things you can post. But think. Respect the privacy of others. If you, like in the case of Pop Smoke, there was a young man with him. I don't know which one shared this information about the address, but sometimes you're sharing information about other people that they don't want share it. I'm going to say this also about when you're in the room with a camera. If you're in the room with a camera, whether it's just you and another person, you and a group, you and an event, you will have to assume that that information is going to end up online. It may, it may not, but you have to go under the assumption. So if you're doing something nefarious, if you're somewhere you shouldn't be, if you have some information or you use in some kind of secret organization, you don't want people to know about you, they probably just shouldn't go. Or you have to take the steps to minimize or mitigate the fact that your information will be shared. It may or may not, but you have to assume that nowadays, if you in, in any type of setting, and there is a camera there, there is a good likelihood that that information is going to show up online and most likely it's going to show on social media. And I'll just say, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying govern yourself accordingly. When you're clicking links, you've got to know where those links come from. I know they use a little bitly thing now where they kind of disguise the link and what it's linking to. If I don't recognize it, I'm not clicking it, particularly if it's from somebody I don't know. And even people that you think you know, beware of clicking on these links in these feeds. That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, don't allow these all these unnecessary these mis miscellaneous platforms to scan your friend and contact list. When you join one of these platforms, the first thing they say, look, can we go into your contact list and send this out to everybody you know? Don't do that. I mean, it's lazy. It's fast. It gets you into more people faster, but it also exposes you to more, more harm because, and you're exposing information of other people. That's not being respectful of others. Let's keep going here. Be selective of who you select, of you accept as a friend on your social media network. Now, my rule is if you, if you reach out to me on Facebook or one of these platforms, and if I know you, that's not, that's the first <laughs> criteria. I've got to go to your social media platform, let's say Facebook. And if the only thing I see there is the date that you join and that one picture, I'm not going to accept because that we know that that's usually the sign of a hacker or a spoof or somebody who's created an account using your name. I need to see some history. I need to see some pictures of you and your business. I need to see a timeline. But you should do the same. Just because that name says Robert Gatewood, and you go to that page and there's just one picture of me and that's it. There's a good chance that that's a spoof account or what we call a hacked account. So you want to be more selective about that because once they get in there and they get a hold of your friends, then they're going to start connect, connecting your friends, trying to sell them things and get their information. If you have a de an active account that has been gone dormant and you're not using it, delete those inactive accounts because that's one of the, that's one of the main ways these hackers work. 
they go to account, they know you're not watching it, they grab your name and they're off and running. So if you have an inactive account out there, you want to delete those accounts and check every now and then, just do a search on your name. It's going to spook some of you all right now. Just go to Facebook or Instagram and type in your name. And I bet half of you are going to have another account out there you didn't know about. So you want to just keep an eye on what's going on. Be, be careful about installing applications. Applications are notorious for going into your computer or your phone and grabbing your data, getting into your contact list, start uh, putting in spyware. If you're not familiar with it and these little free apps with all these little bells and whistles, if you don't need it, don't just pass on it, okay? Uh, review the settings before posting. Of course, that goes without saying. When you're posting something, you can, in Facebook, for instance, you can post things that go to friends only, friends of friends, to the public, and sometimes you can post something, just go to yourself if you want to store it for, for later viewing. Check those settings before you post, okay? Uh, remember that the safety does not stop at your door because sometimes your family members may not be as safety conscious as you are. You're doing everything in your power. To, Look, I'm not going on Facebook. I'm not going on social media. I'm not doing this. But you got a child out here or you have a, a significant other or a boo, and they're just posting everything. So now you've been compromised. So you want to make sure that you have some type of meeting of demands on what we're going to be posting and what we're not. Because sometimes, which it looks like the case with Pop Smoke, it was he and another fellow that were doing all this posting on Facebook and Instagram that got him killed. So you have to be mindful of others around you. You may be doing everything right, but somebody around you may be letting open, leaving the barn door open. Talk to your kids about it. Kids are notorious for revealing private information. To them, it's cute. They be walking around your house, filming the, the, the mailbox, and <laughs> I mean, they're showing everything. And you look up, and one day on, you, you see your whole house online. Your inside, the bathroom, the front door, the mailbox, the tag on the door. You have to be mindful of what these kids are doing. Also, these games, as much fun as they may be. Folks, let me tell you, you don't have to do everything on social media. Some things, you just might have to get out the old checkerboard. <laughs> the old chessboard. And do it in person. These games are notorious for spreading malware and spyware. Forget the popularity contest. Now, I know sometimes, depending on your industry, the more likes, the merrier. The more activity, the merrier. But sometimes you got to choose quality over quantity. Now, you got to weigh. You got to, like I said, you got to th think about what's more important to me right now, getting more followers or being safe. They're not necessarily mutually exclusive. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to raise your awareness. I'm not going to tell anybody to go out here and stop trying to get followers. I'm just saying you have to weigh it and you don't give out too much personal information like Brandley the model told us earlier. Um, avoid sharing information um, accidentally. Be aware of what's in the photos behind you. Sometimes people, they, they think they're doing like a selfie headshot or just taking a, a picture. Sometimes behind them is some very revealing information. Pictures of family members, pictures of of uh, certificates, pictures of things that have addresses on them, things that have phone numbers on them. Be aware of your surroundings when you're putting things online. Once again, this is what happened to Pop Smoke. He didn't purposely put his address out there. Somebody took a picture of a package that had the full address on it. Be aware of your company's policies. You go into this company, you end up just having a good old social media good time, not realize that you're breaking the company's policies. I've seen many young people have their careers derailed because they got a little too happy on the company's computers and they didn't know what the company's social media policy was. You need to be aware of that. All right, getting to the end here. Now let's let's also let's be aware of people that will abuse your good nature, your good brand, your good name to further their aims on social media. You think they're doing it because they like you, 
What they really like is your followers and your influence. And they may be horrible out there on social media. So when you find yourself somebody who's just too happy to be in your presence and they just filming your every move and they want to get on every picture you're on, you have to kind of keep an eye on those folks and make sure they're not using that information. And I won't, I, I am not against calling somebody up and checking with somebody. So look, I know you took this picture of us the other day, but I really don't, I prefer if you not use that picture right now because I was trying to, I was there to support your event, but I did not do that as a photo op. So if you don't mind, I would appreciate it. I mean, sometimes, I mean, that's a tough conversation to have sometimes in the social media world, but sometimes you got to be a little more protective of your brand and your image. So that's what I'm, that's, there are other things that I'd be willing to share with you. Uh, if you want to do a consultation, if you want me to send you this information as an, as an email, you can go back and watch this, this show, share it with others, but understand that your safety is paramount in this social media age. I send out my regrets and my prayers and thoughts, and uh, I really feel sorry for this young man, Smoke Pop, uh, that he was a casualty of social media. He was a rapper, so there's a possibility he may have been fallen by some other reason, but we know that his, according to the uh, investigators, as they traced his, his tracks leading up to his demise, they found that his activities on social media were a contributing factor to his demise. And so I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want it to happen to anybody you know. I'm not telling you to not use social media. I want you to think twice about my earlier statements about the necessary evil. I'm not saying that it's evil. But when we say evil, sometimes we mean sometimes things have more, the bad might outweigh the good. And you have to ask yourself, does social media fall in that category for you? Yes, there's some good, but is it worth the risk? Folks, that's going to wrap it up for today. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. I'm here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. I want to thank you again uh, for tuning in today. Uh, we'll be back next week right here on the Marketing Pulpit, as we do every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Please share this information with others. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Brand Lee has shared information about the... Uh, the night fashion show in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Let's support her. Uh, thank you for Mr. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Attorney Bradley Thomas. Thank you, everybody else. I see your numbers over there on social media. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube, LinkedIn. Uh, I see some folks over there on Twitter. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back next week. And go out here, be safe on social media. And if you must do it, let's be safe about it. All right, folks, we'll see you next week. This is the Marketing Pool. And as always, if you want to be successful, you have to do these three things. Let me see. Let me take this, uh, this screen off this thing off the screen here. Uh, if you want to be successful, you got to do these three things. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, you helps me out on this. You got to do these three things. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time, and you have to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work. People don't understand marketing. You can't stop every time the money runs out. You need to come on and tell people why your service is different. Why is everybody so angry? Airline passengers biting the TSA agents. I mean, it's, it reminds me of one of those uh, zombie apocalyptic movies. And as a community, collectively, we're going to be taken more seriously if we have that strong economic foundation. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you have to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work.